What's up, everybody? Uh, Christo here with the newest podcast. Uh, today joining me is my man, Chad, and we are going to discuss fragrances at work. So, Chad, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel there. Hi there. Uh, my name is Chad. I, am, I have a channel named A Gentleman's Journey. Uh, I'm probably one of the more direct and blunt uh, reviewers out there. Um, I'm politically incorrect, unfortunately. You know, I, I'm very direct, and sometimes my opinions do offend. <laughs> so, okay. uh, but a lot of the stuff that I review uh, is more of your mainstream designers, and I do cater more so for the everyday person out there. Um, I do do some niche, but not a lot. Okay. And when I do. When I do talk about niche, it's more of your mainstream design. Uh, sorry, your mainstream niche, um, like Aqua de Parma and your creeds. I don't really talk too much about the indie houses. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so what's your scent to the day? What are you wearing as we talk right now? Well, it's just an everyday man scent. I'm actually wearing Hugo Boss Unlimited. Okay. Uh, myself, I'm wearing Amouage's Honor. This is in prep for my summer list that's kind of going on my channel right now. Oh, uh, Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about your scent of the day, what it smells like, what you get. Well, it's, it's got um, pineapple, it's got some mint, uh, it's got, I'm not sure if it's Gaiac wood or what, and um, I think it's labdomum, but I'm not sure. There's, there's a type of floral, there's only like four or five notes. Okay. But it's, it's a, originally I thought it was ginger, but it's just, it's um, the mint in the pineapple itself that's uh, that's mixed together that to my nose, however, it smells somewhat like ginger. It, it's a little bit different. So given that effect. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, before we continue, I just want to yeah. say thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, no, it's, it's a pleasure. We've been in contact actually for, I'd say nearly two years now on Facebook. We've met up a couple times. Yeah. Uh, well, um, and we're overdue again to shoot some videos, which I'll be doing uh, in a couple months. So definitely. All right. Okay. So Chad is joining me today for a topic I thought would be uh, a good one for him uh, because both myself and himself, we have worked in kind of unique work environments. So fragrances at work or fragrances in the office is what we're going to talk about. Now, quickly, I'm going to go in, uh, if people aren't overly familiar, I'm going to go with my recent <clears throat> environments uh, and just talk about my general rules. Okay. So uh, for those that <clears throat> excuse me weren't familiar, uh, I was an English teacher before, and that's kind of right about midpoint of my f uh, teaching experience is when I got really, really into fragrances, which was uh, also the same time where I actually started teaching in junior and senior high school. Before that, I was teaching like after school courses and stuff, so it's a really different environment. Uh, so I would end up basically being in uh, classrooms with like 30 students or more. It's not like North America standards where you get like 20, 25. Uh, you would get like 30, 35 students in a class. That's a lot. It is a lot, man. And this is also in the tropics. Uh, and even though most schools I had uh, worked in had air conditioning, they didn't always, you know, cut the mustard, so to say, when you had that many people and it's that hot and humid. So, Kind of once I started getting into fragrances, I did start getting some rules. Um, uh, and just with the humidity, humidity is weird because it seems to just suck the perfume off your skin and just put it into the environment. Um, so you don't even smell it on yourself, but everyone around you smells it, if you know what I mean. Yep, yep. Okay. So uh, my kind of rule, especially towards my last year or two teaching, um, I would go very minimal. I would only spray like once or twice, uh, okay. especially for heavier niche that I'm kind of into or well, for heavier stuff. Can I ask you a question? Of course. Now, because your, your tastes are very different than my own, mm -hmm. would you be wearing some of these unusual, unique fragrances in the Indonesian uh, temperatures? Uh, at school, rarely. Okay. Uh, I would definitely wear more my accessible designer stuff uh, for okay. a few reasons. Partially because I didn't want to waste, you know, valuable juice to sit with a bunch of like 13 year old kids, right? I hear you. Okay. Nobody cares about what I'm wearing, where I'm there kind of with my mind occupied trying to do things. 
I don't have time to enjoy it. The people around me aren't going to enjoy it. So I would wear things that are more mainstream. Um, but there were some times where I would get a new bottle that I was really excited about, or I'd want to test something out for a review that I was doing soon. Mm -hmm. um, and I would wear something, you know, darker, heavier, woodier, um, spicier to an extent. I'm more of a woody kind of guy though, but yeah, I, sometimes I would wear those. Okay. But if I did, yeah, the rule was like one or two sprays maximum. I see. Okay. But like uh, one example, I'll talk about a little bit later more specifically, but I remember wearing Chanel's Edition Blanche to school, something like that. I would go a little bit heavier. Um, you know, well, it's a little bit cheaper. It's easier to access. Um, yeah, it's it's got some kick to it, but it's not offensive. Yeah, it's quite, well, you would think, but uh, yeah, I'd wear something a little lighter, a little fresher, something like that. But yeah, that's okay. generally my environment and rules. So tell us about yours. Well, I, uh, I work as a transit operator, so I drive a uh, city public bus. and mm -hmm. Whereabouts, um, just for those, or if you in, want. In about. the greater Toronto area. So okay. I'm not going to say what company, because I, well, for safety reasons, you know. Yeah, no, that's fine. Just, you know, for but, those... People yeah. might not realize we're both Canadian as well. We're yeah, well, literally just Chris, Chris though is about forty-five minutes west of where I'm from. So yeah, we're actually quite close. Yeah, I actually had a few uh, people, a few subscribers, actually recognize me on, uh, on the job, which is always a little bit uh, creepy, but at the same time, it's flattering as well. Wow, so. really? That's interesting. Yeah. So I've never actually I had more people recognize me in Indonesia, which is crazy because really? yeah, there's like two hundred and forty million people in the country. Damn. Um, but I guess it's a much smaller community. Not many people have access to YouTube or no Probably. references. But yeah, I've only been recognized uh, three times, and oh, and every I'm single still... every single occasion it's been on the bus. Like I may have been recognized at the store, but they've just never said anything. So, but who knows? Um, but when it comes to uh, my job, we have a policy where it's, uh, it's fragrance free. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're, you can't wear any cologne or perfume or any kind of fragrance, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's just, I don't know. It's just, uh, because it's like my work or like my company, it's, it's mm -hmm. actually a city job. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's very political for obvious reasons, Yes. you know, uh, so they don't want to offend anybody and people are, are more sensitive in every aspect of, of the word, yeah. you know, but like. Uh, like you say anything, somebody's going to get offended by that, but like sensitive in the fact that, you know, um, we're more prone to illnesses or just sneezing and that sort of bit. That's true. Is, uh, what I, yeah, you would have a lot of interaction with people. You'd also probably be oh, absolutely, a lot yeah. of exhaust and pollution. Oh yeah. No, my, my, I think my lifespan's cut short because of the job, but it's all good. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's a fragrance free environment and, um, I still wear fragrances, you know, but mm -hmm. it's, it, they're lighter. Um, I used to like, when I began my fragrance journey, I used to really like the heavier stuff. I used to love, like, believe it or not, like, I, and I, I don't like it now, but I used to actually like Paco Rabanne 1 million. You know, mm -hmm. I used to like, um, I used to adore Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille, but exactly. like, those are too heavy for me. Like, e even though like 1 million is just a sweet fragrance, it's still loud. You know, it's yeah. still heavy in that sense, but uh, tobacco vanilla or even uh, Christians in New York, it's, it's an independent company. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's too heavy. And I used to love wearing those, but even to my nose nowadays, it's, it's too hard. Okay. So um, I didn't even know that it was a fragrance free environment, but uh, everybody at work knows me as the cologne guy. Right. And not for overspray and just because I, I do the whole YouTube bit and a lot of the people that I ask for their thoughts on a fragrance that I'm reviewing, mm -hmm. it's, it's actually my, my workmates that I ask. So that's why right. I'm known as the, the cologne guy. Oh, right. So, and, and one of my, uh, union members, um, mm -hmm. uh, I asked him and uh, he goes, uh, it's actually a fragrance free working environment, but I like your channel. Uh, and I didn't wow. even know that I didn't even know that he, he watched. Like I try to keep work and uh, YouTube separate, you know, cause I don't want the politics involved. Cause like I said, mm -hmm. we're a political or uh, yeah. company, you know, and yeah. for good reason, I understand that, but you know, uh, management does know about, uh, the channel now because 
of the some of the things that uh, that were happening back in March that you know of mm-hmm. uh, that I don't want to divulge on the mm-hmm. Fry Cast. I'll w- with that one person that, that you know about. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So when I was coming clean with that uh, situation, I had to actually. I didn't have to, but I felt the need to just okay. uh, to let out no like it's just there was no secrets that I have a YouTube channel and uh, the manager was like and he's a very high up manager and he's like oh okay that's kind of interesting so mm-hmm. that's why I kind of have to watch myself you know but also watch my fragrances <laughs> right right <laughs> like, e- e- even this guy watches uh, wears cologne I-, I smell it but right he's just you know mindful of his applications everything a lot of the stuff that I wear are your fresh boring aquatics that's the type of fragrances that i personally enjoy the most okay you know but like in the winter time i love a good leather and woody fragrance you know with mixed mm-hmm. with a little bit of spices but I, i'm not in heavy into like the, the tobacco or the incense type of fragrances okay so yeah yeah i have to say you, you mentioned that and that's kind of an interesting point uh you know co-workers that uh you know are familiar with what your obsession is and I don't think really any I'm quite a quiet closed person Mm -hmm. especially at work I just kind of go in I do my job and I'm done I don't really interact with people they're not but um yeah I don't think anyone at school really found out about um what I was into like let alone the fact that I did reviews yeah um there were a lot of students that would ask me about, you know, uh, what social media and stuff I'm into, but I just like oh, okay. book. That's it. I don't do anything else. Well, su- surprisingly, surprisingly with my work, uh, a lot of guys are actually into fragrances, you know? Um, yeah, I guess they're probably at that age where they're, you know, well, yeah. And, and because I'm them. like known as the cologne guy, I get yeah. like, I've sold a lot of my collection. Like I, I once had up to 65 bottles and decants and um, I went down to about 22, 23, but during my little hiatus from reviewing, I actually went up back up to like 30. Okay. Um, so like I, I sold a lot of my stuff to my workmates and yeah. like even to this day, like I think earlier in the week, uh, one of my friends asked me, "Is like, hey, do you have anything for sale? Because like, you know, it, it's a quick sale. I could probably get a little bit more from mm-hmm. if I were to sell it on Kijiji or somebody else in the community. But unfortunately, because we have really uptight conservative anal laws, we're not allowed to ship cosmetics whatsoever. We can't even ship cosmetics within Canada, for heaven's sake. Really? Oh, I do. Well, well, I've no, done I, it dozens of times. Well, I I tried sending. Uh, uh, mark uh, a couple of things before and they mm. said no and i and i had to put it uh in a a different box and it, i put whatever i was sending him at the time um mm. in a cell phone box it was like uh that i bought from them so they didn't even ask what it was and i was able to get get it to them it's just we're, our our laws are very strict so That's, i hmm, okay i've i because usually when i ship uh, because I've shipped internationally for like half a decade now, I just ship as men's cosmetics, uh, cosmetic samples. But uh, do you do that? Like in, that. But have you done it since you came back home? Oh yeah, lots, lots. Really, and they don't say anything. No, is but I don't. I never tell them it's fragrance, perfume, anything. Just cosmetics, cosmetic samples, men's well, cosmetics. And and see, and the first time I ever tried sending anything was to one of the gentlemen in New York. Yeah. And uh, mind you, we're going back. This is before I even started reviewing. Uh, mm-hmm. it, was, it was I think it was January, February of uh, 2013, mm-hmm. and. Um, it was a bottle of cologne, very well wrapped and everything like that. And the woman's like, well, what is it? And I said, it was just a bottle of fragrance. And she goes, we cannot ship anything over, over the border mm-hmm. that is cosmetic related. So I don't think that's true. It's, it's a uh, fragrance because it has alcohol generally, and it can be seen as a flammable substance. And, and that I could see it, but she said fragrance mm-hmm. of any kind or fragrance related, sorry, cosmetic related, not fragrance related. Cosmetic. I don't think I don't know. I don't think she knows what she's talking about. My wife gets cosmetics shipped over from the United States from 
like boutiques that label it as cosmetics and she's well, never had a problem and and we have a uh, an independent perfumer up here in toronto that has sent me some samples from his line yeah you know and I it's been shipped to the mirror fragrance samples though that's well it. like well you could tell on like on the logo it, itself because it's like i don't want to say the logo but it's it's got the name fragrances in it you know and right i've i've had stuff uh shipped from like fragrance x and fragrance net you know and for mm. some reason they they could ship over the border i don't know if it's because it's a company or what you know but well, i think they do have specific regulations they have to follow well yeah and they are getting stricter with their shipping laws as well because yeah. uh, i have a very very close friend of mine who's like uh he's like a family member now uh who He's, he's one of the go-to guys when it comes to splits. Um, he, whenever he sends me something, he has to label it as like candles or something else, you know? Yeah, that's, that's standard. Yeah, because the businesses, they pay a specific rate or they have a specific, uh, what would you call it? Like level of shipping they have to use if they're shipping fragrances. That's why shipping fragrances to Canada is so expensive because... Mm -hmm. send it like a okay. class of mail yeah but anyways um let's get into rules from your employer now you've kind of mentioned some rules that you have like that it's actually a strict fragrance free environment yes um now mine actually was interesting because uh at the school that i worked for the longest I actually had no real rules as a teacher. There were quite specific rules for the students. Okay. Like they had a student's handbook, but in my contract um, and in the school rules for like teacher behavior, there was mm -hmm. actually nothing that said I couldn't wear fragrance. Interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, the students, and this is junior and senior high school, they were not allowed to, and this is serious, uh, they weren't allowed to wear fragrances, perfume, body spray. Girls weren't allowed to wear makeup or nail polish. Wow. Uh, the uh, boys and girls, they weren't allowed to have uh, hairspray or hair gel in their hair. Uh, and they weren't allowed to have, um, you know, any sort of, it was a it was a private school. It was a, a private. Yeah, that's school. still that's very strict. Yeah, um, girls if they had long hair, they had to tie their hair back. You know, it was like for students, it was like to a T, what they could and couldn't do. It but sounds like living in earrings, like not a earring on either side, no tattoos allowed, nothing. It it, it sounds like going back to like the nineteen twenties then. That's you know pretty much usually what religious schools are though. Yeah, um, let's not get into that topic because we don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm just saying, like, you know, it's pretty well known. If you go to Catholic school, Protestant school, you know, you have to wear a uniform and look yeah. like everyone else. So, um, yeah, uh, the students weren't allowed to wear fragrances. I definitely, over the years, did pick up a few here and there, especially girls that would wear, like, body mist and stuff. Okay. But it would be nothing like you would expect in North America in a, uh, uh, you know, even a public school. Like, if you go into a public school here, I'm sure probably... You smell like a Justin Bieber fragrance. <laughs> well, yeah, it would probably be like almost everyone in the class would have something on, whether it be cologne, perfume, body spray, axe yeah. spray, whatever, whatever, whatever. Absolutely, yeah, I agree there. But, um, yeah, so it was kind of unique in that sense. But um, for more formal and less formal work situations, definitely for me, because again, it was kind of unique in my situation. So basically what I did, I worked for a large group that would outsource teachers within <clears throat> its group. Okay? okay. All right. We worked for the head of the department, like for the head of the teaching department for uh, native speakers, like ESL teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and they would assign us to different schools within that school unit okay not school board or whatever because it was a private school so i would work at like you know two different schools but they were both the same 
name, if that makes sense. They're both yep. the same group. Okay. So days when the students would have exams where I wouldn't need to be in class, but it wasn't a public holiday. All right. I to go to my office, which was kind of good and kind of bad. It was good because I didn't have to do very much, but it was bad because it would get really boring. Uh, and eventually that became like, my fragrance testing days like oh okay experiment see, with things see you said it was good and bad going back to the office because the bad part could be the boring aspect see mm -hmm. for me in my line of work boring could be fantastic uh <laughs> i just i'm the kind of person like when i'm working i want to work i don't want to sit in an office chair for eight hours and only do two hours of work that or drives try, me nuts yeah, but, Try driving a bus for eight hours seated. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, like, well, sorry, let me rephrase that because you are seated when you're driving, but it's just like some routes are so tight on time that you can't even leave your seat because your ass is glued to the seat. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I couldn't do something like that. I don't know. I love driving and I actually find it like really um, relieving, like, you know, stress wise. And I just okay. find it really cathartic and it's time to kind of, you know, reflect and think. But, um, I couldn't do that every day. Uh, I, I just, I need to do something creative and I need to be, you know, active and in No, and, and I know exactly where you're coming from. It's like, for me, like, I don't even like driving my own car. Like, before I took this job, I used to love, like, long drives now. It's like, because I do it for a living, I don't even want to be around my own car. Wow, okay. I never even thought of that aspect <laughs> of it. So when I come and see you, that's a long trip. You know that, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but yeah, so my my office days would kind of end up being, you know, eventually uh, days where I could test my, like I'd actually bring in a little box of samples and just sit in the computer room and, you know, test out fragrances and stuff and pull up Fragrantica and look at the notes and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that, yeah, that was kind of like my, uh, you know, more casual days in the office. Um, okay. So, so I actually go a little bit more daring on my casual days, which is oh, okay. interesting. Well, what are some of your more daring scents back then though? Well, I was teaching there like as of maybe just a year and a half ago. So, you know, I was already quite into some daring stuff. I was already into my Comme de Garçons, my Etat Libre d'Oranges and stuff. Yeah, yeah, those are um, interesting. Camouflage to an extent. But when I first started and I was first starting to get into fragrances, yeah, that's when I was wearing, uh, you know, Lacoste's and uh, what else? Prada. So you're really safe stuff. Safer, yeah, definitely safer stuff. Wait, you're, you're mass appealing stuff. That's, yeah, that's what designers are really about anyways. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Um, it was, yeah, you know, the first couple of years, even though I was mostly reviewing or talking about fragrances that were maybe not that mainstream, mm -hmm. they were still somewhat safe or somewhat okay. easy to wear compared to what I'm into now. Well, see, like... Like daring for me now, uh, like, like Azaro's decibel. That that would be extremely daring for me, even Gee, though that's. A, I don't think I've ever smelled that. The bottle comes in the shape of a microphone. So yeah, pretty, I've, I've definitely seen the bottle, but I can't say I've ever smelled it. Um, well, I you can get those at your, like your winners and your TJ. Uh, sorry, winners and uh, Marshalls. I, I'm hmm. pretty sure that the the winners just down the street from you would probably have it every now and then it's like maybe 20 bucks okay but it lasts forever but it's the incense and i don't really care for incense like my girlfriend she loves it you know because it's mm -hmm. very comforting it's just like incense is very prominent in her religion okay so but i hate like i, I personally i'm not a big fan of, of the smell of incense you know i just pulled it up on fragrantica and yeah it looks pretty weird especially for even for like even for me it looks a bit out there there's yeah like, but like another daring fragrance would be like the tom ford tobacco vanilla it's just because it's so loud and strong you know yeah but, i'm like like we had a we have a, a couple guys at work uh they're from um well they're they're south asian well okay. we're saying exactly what but they are like notorious for being heavy on on the sprayer. Like some of these guys, like uh, one of my friends, um, 
he likes his he, he doesn't like anything overly uh pungent and strong which is kind of surprising just from the, the part of the world that he's in mm-hmm. and um he wore tom ford the tom ford noir extreme or tom ford extreme okay yes. I think it's Noir Extreme. Okay. And he said it was one spray, but I could see him wearing like six to eight sprays of this easily because like he was, I'm not making this up. He was about 15 to 20 feet away and mm-hmm. I could smell him. Like he just was gassing everybody. I'm like, how many sprays are you wearing? He goes one. I'm like, okay, that's a crock of shit. Cause I could smell you from here. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. This guy, his, his tastes, but he doesn't like the overly like he wouldn't like Amouage or okay um by Killian or well I don't know about that but like you know how like Amouage is very incensey and very loud sure he doesn't like those types of companies no okay um but he loves Tom Ford and Rolly Portofino right so, you know like like I, I'm heavy with that one like. Like when I had the Deacon, I was a little heavy on the spray with that one. I'll admit because it's just a fresh clean fragrance and i love those types Mm -hmm. but like there was another guy that i ended up selling some of my collection to and um i don't know if you've ever heard of christensen new york or even smelt it i've heard of it um never smelled it though it's supposed to be the one that smells like dolce and gabbana by isn't it that's it yes um i don't know if you want to pull that up on fragrantica but it's absolutely like it's not a bad fragrance uh Mm -hmm. but it's really heavy and loud and I ended up selling that one just because, like, my tastes have changed so much uh, to something less offensive. Mm-hmm. And I think my bottle was 60 ml, and I maybe had, oh, God, I don't know, maybe 50 mls left. Mm-hmm. And um, so I just sold it to my friend who was actually in one of my videos. Um, and he just starts spraying. He must have did like 20 bloody sprays of cushions in New York. 20 sprays in front of me. And I'm just in shock. Like I'm, I'm floored. And I'm like, what the hell? And uh, then, I have, then I had another fragrance for him. I'm like, it just completely like, I was so shocked that it, surprisingly, I didn't even address it at, at that very moment. I says, well, what about this one? And he goes, oh, spray it right here on my arm. I'm like, Cause like he literally went like he showered it like it's you know how you, like normally you just spray like your neck and your chest sort of bit like yeah he just went like one giant circle repeatedly <laughs> and I'm like how in the hell can you smell this when you have all of this and I'm kind of doing like the whole wax on wax off bit on him yeah yeah because he's like oh no no i can smell like you know and i, and I spray it's like oh I, I i get these are the notes he gets i'm like how the hell can you is how is your nose able to penetrate the christian sin to this one spray of, of whatever it was at the time mm-hmm. and he was notorious for being a sprayer like he had 50 mls i think it was out of a 60 ml bottle and he went through it within two weeks okay. he that heavy and i'm like how does management not bring you down the hall and talk to you about this. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> and, and 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 hold on. This okay, and Christensen is a winter fragrance. It was summertime. Right. So I'm like, like this guy will wear like heavy sprays of spice bomb in the summertime. I'm like, that that is just. I, I'm floored. I don't even know what to say. Like that would knock me out though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so. Okay, now let's go on to a more controversial topic here. Okay. Controversy is what I like every now and then. Cause... Fragrances for job interviews. Oh, uh, okay. This comes up a lot in the Facebook groups that I'm Oh, part. yeah, i seen that, yeah. Um, people saying, you know, I've got a job interview tomorrow. What should I wear? Or what would you wear for a job interview? Or which one of these would you wear for a job interview? Mm-hmm. And in my experience from what i've seen over years and years the number one answer is do not wear any fragrance at all because yes if you I walk have... into a room and they smell you before they see you they're instantly going to hate you and not even look at you um 
So what, well, hey, hold on. Unless it's Creed Aventus now, right? Because everybody loves Creed Aventus, apparently, Chris. Well, but there's also just the whole idea of <laughs> the fact that everyone has asthma, everyone has allergies. Well, you know, uh, that's just, that's, uh, unfortunately, that's just like the politically correct soft side of society nowadays. That we love Okay, it. but what about, let's say you work in an office, right? Okay. You work in a cubicle. And you come in just, you know, doused in Aventus and the person next to you has asthma and they well, start having an asthma attack. Fair enough, you know, but it's just like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, cause like, like I stated, like to you, like off podcast before, you know, mm-hmm. we, we are sensitive to a lot of things, unfortunately, like, you know, like somebody could say something and just like, like a simple hello and somebody will be offended. Like even yesterday on the bus, I, I was trying to do a good gesture to, yeah. to a disabled person by helping him on. And I, he just rang my neck off. Right. So, cause like he just, he, he get, he wants his independence. I get it. But like when it comes to the asthma bin, yes, there's more and more people nowadays uh, being diagnosed with, with asthma and breathing problems. But it's not all that common still, you know, like for like if you're doused in a fragrance coming into work, okay, that, then I think your employer does have the right to say something to you, mm-hmm. you know, um, but like, like a few spritz here and there, if, if you do like two spritz of Aventus, my, it doesn't smell great on me, but it's, I have smelled it on some of the other guys and it smells really good. Mm-hmm. you know but if even like one or two sprays and it's even if it's not projecting all that much and it it i don't want to say offense but like you get like it's you start sneezing and everything then you're just really sensitive to fragrances whatsoever like i could just imagine like you're going th- to like a like a drugstore like shoppers drug mart mm-hmm. you know your your sinuses would just flare up then yeah yes definitely um yeah i don't know to me if i was going to go to a job interview in canada because it'd be quite different in indonesia where most of my job interviews have been uh if i was here i i just wouldn't i wouldn't risk it i wouldn't even put on a spray of something fresh and i agree with you like i think that like wearing a fragrance to work okay there's nothing like if you have the job Go yeah. ahead. Wear something. Yeah. Wear something pleasing, but something that's not going to offend anybody, and and make sure it's it's a little light. But like, if you're going to an actual job interview, I personally wouldn't wear anything because I don't want to risk my chances of not landing that job, no yeah. matter what kind of job it is or like how much it pays. Yes. Even if it's minimum wage, but you need that job. It's still in, income coming in to support you in some manner. Yeah. I wouldn't risk it whatsoever. And even if your boss isn't even worried about, you know, uh, people with allergies, people with asthma or, you know, fragrance in the workplace, Mm -hmm. if you walk in and your boss or your potential boss or, you know, interviewer, whatever, smells your fragrance and goes, this guy smells like a douchebag. This guy smells like my grandma. This guy smells like, you know, some teenage kid. You're already you giving him have anything to do with them. Yeah. You're already shot yourself in the foot and you have yeah, you're giving him preconception, uh, preconception noted. Uh, yeah, no, I know. You, you know where I'm coming from. I'm not the most articulate yeah. person now. Um, it, it definitely is something like, you know, dressing for a job interview. I'm all about that because yes. you know, that's the image you put forward. So when you come into a job interview before you've even got a job and you're already known as the cologne guy, yeah, it's not a very good. You're you're already job. stereotyped right there. Exactly. Yeah. So to me, I'm totally against it, and I would never recommend it for anyone. Like if you are, like if like if you are absolutely adamant about wearing a fragrance, just then just wear something like super clean and pleasing, and one spray to the chest so nobody else could smell it. Yeah. Like you, unless you waft it in the air, you know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So let's talk about, on that note, let's talk about the kind of shifting attitudes towards fragrance. Um, Not as much in public, but more like uh, offices, government offices or public offices. In public Mm -hmm. office, I mean, you know, like a work environment. And this is something actually I didn't really notice until... You came back to North America. Yeah, because 
like the first kind of eight years that I was living abroad, I wasn't like I wore fragrances, but not obsessively like I do now. Okay. So when I came back last January, a little over a year ago, uh, I was obviously really obsessed with fragrances. And it was the first time where I actually noticed so many offices having fragrance free policies, some of them even saying no scented body washes, which to me is just like out of this world. Like that's I, becoming way too sensitive now, like way yeah. too politically correct. So, for example, some places that I could think of, maybe you could throw in some more, but um, I've seen this at hospitals, uh, health clinics, doctor's offices, dentists. Okay, well, um, see, when it comes to health practi practices, like doc uh, like the hospital and everything, mm -hmm. that I could understand and see, though. That I could accept because, like, some pl like you know, it is a an environment where people are more prone to illnesses and they're trying to get better. And, and uh, they're like... They're in a lot more of a, um, oh God, come on, Chad. They're more prone to getting uh, illnesses or uh, their immune system is not as strong as it, as it should be. Yeah, I think, okay. yeah, perhaps. And there are going to be people that are more prone to allergies and stuff like that in those environments. Yeah. Like I've had this discussion with a, uh, a friend of mine from New York. Um, he's not a... Um, a reviewer he's not part of the community but he does love fragrances and every single time that i i go to new york i meet up with them but mm -hmm. one of his friends is um is a doctor and they're both from jamaica but they they live now in new york and i think it's connecticut and the one the doctor actually lives in connecticut we'll just say it's connecticut mm -hmm. but um he had this like, he wears cologne but it's not overly offensive it's just one you're safe designers i'm assuming mm -hmm. and um he had this one blind patient and she didn't know the nurses or anything but she knew the doctor from his scent alone right. and, it, and it wasn't uh, like she wasn't offended by the scent she she just realized that it was dr so-and-so from his cologne okay which i was I kind know. of surprised when he told me that he was actually able to wear a fragrance so okay um, see as well, I think there's also the fact that in dentist, in the dentist, in the hospital, at a clinic, you are like almost certainly going to be in very close quarters with someone. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. You're wearing a lot of fragrance and a dentist is working on you, someone who is going to be hanging right over you. Yes. You know, they're probably not going to want to smell everyone's fragrance that comes in that day, you know, for hours well, and hours on end. And if, if I'm at the dentist, I want my dentist to be focused as much as possible because I don't want my fragrance to possibly offend and where, and where she has like that little poker and it goes through my actual gum instead of like grazing against the tooth, you know? Sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, and as well, employment centers, that's the first time I saw it when I came back to Canada. I was yeah, looking and, and I never even knew that until you told me, so. Yeah, it's, well, because it's government aligned, of course, so that's okay. the first time I went to open up the door, and I still remember wearing uh, Comme des Garçons Kyoto, which is quite a weird, strange fragrance as well, <laughs> and I went to open the door for my appointment that I had scheduled for, like, days and it's just like in big letters, no fragrance. I was like, oh, crap, what should I do? I, so I just went in and just hoped that they didn't smell it on me. There is no problem. So um, how, what was the outcome of that experience then? It was fine. No, nobody noticed. Nobody okay. noticed. Anything. Well, they may have noticed. They just didn't want to say anything. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Either way, no, nothing was said. No one uh, okay. leave or wash it off or whatever. But I just next time I went in, I didn't wear it or wear anything. Um, even like Service Ontario, Service Canada, so basically like um, federal and provincial mm -hmm. uh, offices that, you know, help with certain services. Like, so very recently, I had to go pick up my son's new health card. Okay. Service Ontario, because healthcare here is provided by the provincial government. And yeah, it's, you know, there's a big sign on the door, no fragrance. And it's like, I didn't even think of it. And it's the kind of thing I doubt would get picked up on, but for me to go all the way across town on the bus 
to go in there and then them say, you know, sorry, you're wearing too much perfume. Can you please leave the premises and come back after you've washed it off? I just be like furious, right? So oh, absolutely, yeah. Well, like you're coming out of your own time, especially on public transit. Yeah. And where you are, I don't know how reliant the public transit is. So. Actually, I got to say Hamilton's pretty good. I think it's, you know, the size of the city makes it fairly efficient. Well, then maybe you um, should write, maybe you should come over to where I live and try my transit organization. <laughs> no, I've done transit downtown Toronto a couple times since I've been home. and well, They're pretty decent, though. It's good. But like even at like 1130 at night, it was just like ram packed. And it was like, I couldn't, and it was like a Tuesday night or something. Well, that's because it's TTC. The later in the night, the the fewer the the service. Uh, yeah. It's true. All, it's, all, like, it's all about the, the almighty dollar. We had to run and hop on. We like almost missed it. We like, we took the streetcar. We had to run and get on the streetcar because we almost missed it. Oh uh, okay, yeah. Well, after a concert, but street yeah. Streetcar anyway. too. That's different. So yeah. Um, okay, so kind of that's a, a little bit of a segue, you know, uh, fragrances and uh, offices, public, private offices, brings me into a topic that has kind of come up again since I've been back, the sense that more offensive smells are yeah. strangely publicly accepted, and by that I mean cigarette smoke, pot smoke, uh, body odor, things like that. Oh, and trust me, in especially with my line of work, that's I smell that shit every single day. Yeah, exactly. That's why, because like it's not quite directly related to work, but kind mm. of in a way to office and stuff. And I was like, I know Chad will have so many stories. Oh, that. you have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. We're going back a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I picked up this uh, this old man, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I picked him up and then I picked him like going northbound on, on one street. And then I picked him up going southbound. On so the same basically street. coming back. Yeah. He was just going to the grocery store. And uh, okay. so when I picked him up to go, to go back home, um, he didn't come on the bus just yet, but there was a lady who came like, there was, I think there was like two or three people there. Uh, the lady comes on and she goes, he just shit himself. Oh, no way. So he had shit trickling down his leg. And I can't say no, you know, and the guy is clearly humiliated. You know, it, it's an accident. I, you know, it, it, and that stuff happens as you get older, right? Mm -hmm. And he was only going two stops, but oh, because man. it's still a senior citizen, I can't say no. Yeah. And uh, he, 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 he had the courtesy and the respect not to sit down. Oh. But, <laughs> Well, because it would have been all over the seat. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and I can imagine some of your audience is just laughing at the story. Trust me. I would love to discuss a lot of the stories that I have for transit mm -hmm. on my YouTube channel, but because I'll get fired for it probably. Yeah. I, well, you know what? It's No, I'm not going to get fired. The whole U YouTube channel, they will force me to take that down. So right. What, <laughs> but he, um, you know, I could clearly tell that he was quite humiliated. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a sensitive issue, and and I just said, "Come on board, sir, no problem." You know. Yeah. And um, I knew where he was going. He was only going like two or three stops down the road. Yeah. And, um, but it was pretty pungent, and I only had maybe like, maybe no more than eight people on the bus, and it was one of those articulated buses. Uh, you might oh, know right. it as a slinky bus. Yeah. So uh, he and he was at the at that middle door. So, but I could smell it, and oh, uh, when he oh. got off. My, I actually was wearing Givenchy play. Mm -hmm. So and that's heavy in the tonka bean. And I don't know the other notes off the hand. So I just, and I always carry a bottle of cologne with me. That's just the type of person I am. And like, well, when it comes to work wise. <laughs> so I just started going, just doing it like it's Febreze. And I had one woman sh saying, Oh my God, what are you doing? I'm like, listen, do you want to smell the, the remnants of shit in the air? Or do you want to smell a half decent designer fragrance that is sweet in nature? Yeah. So give me option B. Right. You know, so I just want, like, and I don't like doing that, you know, but it, it was distracting to me and the others. And it's not like I could call it in and say, like, hey, I need a replacement bus. It's just because it's, it'll eventually air out. Not that yeah. an accident on the bus. That's something else. Mm -hmm. You know, but like even like the other day, uh, a guy comes comes on the bus, and 
I know that you're going to bring this up, uh, smoking, right? I yeah. absolutely hate the smell of nicotine. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I find it, I find that offensive, mm -hmm. you know, and especially if they're like taking that one giant puff yeah. before they come on the bus. And as they enter the bus, instead of blowing out uh, the smoke, uh, like they're they're like half their body's already in the bus, but like their head is outside and they blow it out there. I'm right. like, I'm sorry, but you're still bringing that stank inside. Mm -hmm. And and you know because I'm a, I'm a bit of a politically incorrect asshole at times, I'll thank them for it. You right. Know? And then I'll sometimes take out whatever cologne I'm wearing and I'll spray it right in front. Right. Right. I don't, and if they get offended by that, I'm saying, well, I'm sorry, but we a lot of people are offended by the smoke itself. Mm -hmm. So two wrongs don't make a right. I, I, I get it, you know, but I, I personally would rather smell like, God forbid, tobacco oud over like a really pungent nicotine smell. Yeah. And we get a lot of smokers that come on the bus. Like they're just smoking while they wait for the bus. Yeah. Just killing time. Well, why can't you just read a book instead or play on your smartphone? Yeah. So, and because of like, like, what you know where I live, you know, um, mm -hmm there's like, it's not just residential, it's very uh, industrial as well. So we pick up a lot of warehouse workers and everything. So you, you're naturally going to be sweaty and stinky. I used to do warehouse before my transit gig. So, mm -hmm. you know, like it's just when it comes to my line of work, you know, because it's a paying customer, it's mm -hmm. ching ching, you know, unfortunately in, in the transit industry, the, the customer is normally more preferred than, their employee because the employee costs the money while the, the customer is the money, you know? Right. So they're going to side with the customer because I've, I've had this discussion with one of my, uh, with, with the manager that I come out with, uh, the, that I said, uh, yeah, I have a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. you know? And because I'm also known as Mr. Sarcasm at work and I'm one of the, we have a few outspoken guys and I'm one of them. Right. So, and, I've sometimes gone off on some of the supervisors, including a lot of my own colleagues, because, you know, we do things that we shouldn't be doing, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, like, cause I've had this discussion where like, they say it's a smoke free environment. I'm like, okay, if you, if you really want to be politically correct, then I don't want, if, if you're smoking a cigarette or a cigar or uh, a joint before you come on the bus, mm -hmm. I have every right to say, nope, sorry, you smell of that. Mm -hmm. You know, because even though you're not smoking, it's still emanating off of you. Yes, definitely. It's, that that stench is in, in the clothing fabric. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I have a lot of experience, you know, on the bus because I live like basically in the far east end. Yeah. My college like in the far north east end and my college is in like the southwest and my bus ride is pretty much about an hour if everything goes perfectly it's about an hour for me to that's get long there. man it is yeah um uh just you know kind of the sacrifice i have to make to live in a decent house that i can afford though yep but uh yeah like just on the bus and actually, it kind of goes both ways. It's funny because sometimes I'll be on the bus and I do live kind of just on the other side of a really, really rough part of Hamilton. Uh, it's actually quite infamous around Canada. Uh, I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty dangerous, pretty rough area. Actually, the, the street that runs south of mine, we've mentioned it before, is actually even worse. Um, and I'll couple times I'll take the bus from there because I'll drop my son off at school and just okay. take the bus. But yeah, uh, so anyways, uh, getting on the bus and, you know, just having someone in front of me that just reeks, like just totally reeks of pot smoke. Um, oh, yeah. And it's I, I... so annoying and it's so inconsiderate to me as well, especially when there's like children on the bus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, People that smell like dirty ashtrays, um, and how can you not? And how can you not be offended by that? It's like if if someone says, "Oh, it doesn't bother me," it's like, well, maybe because you don't smell it, because you're one of them. Well, they have sympathy. Smokers have sympathy from. Oh hell thing. no! That's that was their choice to start smoking. You know. Well, I'm not saying my opinion. I'm just saying you know those types of people, and I'm going to use like finger quotes there. 
are sympathetic towards smokers because it's an addiction. So they're allowed to which, smoke. Which it is. You know, it's it's not easy to quit when you have all those chemicals and everything. It's it's kind of like giving up sugar in a sense, you know. It's Oh, no, I'm I'm you know, I'm not saying it's a hard thing to quit, but it's just weird that such a gross, disgusting, you know, this is more accepting yeah addiction is more acceptable and i admit i smoke uh socially if i'm at the pub with my buddies I'll yeah no like well grab. whenever whenever we meet up like you're not heavy with with your uh with your light ups i have i only see you like if like we normally hang out for like a good four hours you only yeah. light up once or twice i geez i don't i think the only time i ever smoked around you was when we went to uh dunder in that one time but um i don't yeah, really that, remember what fragus was that um, Fadon? the fade on uh sable marocain yeah. yeah yeah and i still got that sample so that that's the one we in, in finger quotations mucked yeah. it up yeah <laughs> using christo's words mucked so I'm like, <laughs> that's not a word i would use <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, i remember like being in uh the liquor store going to get beer and just the guy in front of me just stinks of pot smoke, like so bad. It's so obvious. Now, was that the beer store that I took you that one time? Uh, no, no, that was the one that's a little bit further away. Now the one that I'm talking about is right by my house, which is a much rougher area than where that was. But, um, I may, is it on the main strip? It's by the, you know, where the marshals that where you got the, oh, yeah, 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 there's the, the LC in there. That's where it oh, was. Okay. I know exactly what you mean then. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, just that kind of stuff. It's just weird that people will, you know, be outraged by me wearing a nice fragrance or an expensive fragrance, let's say, rather than someone who habitually smokes in their house yeah closed windows and doors and they just literally smell like a walking ashtray and that's more offensive than me wearing like you know a nice niche fragrance it's just well really some of the things that you wear chris though i don't know if they're so <laughs> man i wouldn't compare like it's funny though because even though i do smoke socially and i used to smoke habitually um i still find the smell of cigarettes like especially stale cigarettes like ashtray like i find it repulsive and it, that is different that's very interesting me. then because i've never heard a a smoker even a, a social smoker ever mm. say that but i don't smoke in my house i've never smoked in my house uh in indonesia like when i would go to the pub with my buddies you're actually allowed to smoke in pretty much every bar and restaurant there mm -hmm. um usually they'll just have smoking areas Okay. Unlike here where it's completely banned and you can't even smoke on like patios and stuff like that usually. Yeah. Well, um, 10 years ago, yes, but just the laws have changed so much even since you've been gone. Man, and that's a whole nother topic. You know, I kind of agree with it to a point, but when you can't even let people smoke on the patio, that's just getting pretty ridiculous. So, well, when it comes to like the whole fragrance bit, you know, it's like when they say, oh, well, it has to be like, like, it doesn't matter like what work it is, you know, whether you're corporate, you're blue collar or whatever, you know, if, it, if they say it has to be fragrance free, mm -hmm. you know, then, then I'm one of those guys that's like, okay, if it has to be fragrance free and some people are going to shake their heads or roll their eyes and like, then I demand that I have a hound dog next to me at all times when I'm on my bus and he gets to decide whether or not you smell because their sense of smell is you know so if if my if my hound dog says you can't go into work well then i lose pay for that yeah that's the thing though like if if you're the employee you've always got it stacked against you you know yeah, i know there's always the right one if you're working like um uh you know a secretary's job or you work in concierge or something like that and you know front desk or whatever and someone comes in and talks to you and they're like offended by your perfume all they have to do is just say can i talk to your manager and you know you're that close to just potentially losing your job and it's kind of scary in a way yeah it is well and you know what it's just like but if i look at it this way too it's like if you are going to wear a fragrance to work mm -hmm. and you make sure that it's pleasing for the majority of people not just like because like we do have people and this is kind of where it kind of 
mm -hmm. uh, comes into the video that or the podcast that you did with Eugene, you know, the whole mm -hmm. compliment factor. Yeah. Um, pe like, you know, people say, well, I wear things for myself and myself only. Yeah. Which is fine. Mm -hmm. But when you're going into work and if your fragrance is one of those fragrances that are very daring, you know, hell, if, you, if you're one who wears, like, if you're like the, the point zero 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 one percent who likes to wear secretions magnifique mm -hmm. okay but you you are not allowed to wear that to the to, to any work that whatever it is you know i see i and you know i'm just playing devil's advocate here okay. but who's gonna sit on the board that determines if a fragrance is acceptable or unacceptable because if i'm sitting on the board i'm gonna say <laughs> Yo, I don't want you wearing that shit to my workplace. I don't want to smell that stuff. It's disgusting. Secretions, go ahead. That stuff smells weird, interesting. So, you know, it's... But, but, it, but I'm saying, like, if the majority of the people find that, you know, and, like, and I'm not just talking about fragsters like us. I'm just talking about, like, like the general population. Mm -hmm. If they are offended more so, like, even, like, a lot of fragsters like us, we're offended by, like, a scent like secretions by the feet. Mm -hmm. That's just a novelty smell anyways. Like, no, like, there's going to be, like, very seldom people that are actually going to wear it and enjoy it, but yeah. there are those types of characters out there. Yeah, definitely. But, but for the most part, if a fragrance generally is very pleasing to the masses, then mm -hmm. I think that you sh that that you should be per, uh, permitted within limits of course you know i i where. agree but i think it's just impossible to do that without actually hiring a jury to sit down and like deem every fragrance every day because it's like where do you go with it you say oh well you know this new one that i picked up it smells really nice so i should be able to wear it to work and then you know you wear it into work and someone says Maybe not even that it just smells bad, but you're just wearing too much. Like, I like your fragrance, but you're wearing way too much of it. Yeah, well, and, and, and that's where you have to kind of like, they say, okay, one or two sprays, that, and that's it, you know. But like, if it's like a really, you know, our dear friend loves tobacco oud, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're heavy on that, if you do like, and I don't know if you ever smell tobacco oud. You know, have you? I have, but it, it doesn't really come to mind. Okay. It's a really dirty, skanky, I don't know if it's animalic. I really don't. But, like, it's a really strong, potent fragrance, you know? Okay. If you want to wear it, fine. I think maybe one spray. But, like, if, you, if you're one of those heavy trigger guys that does, like, the whole 10 spray Tuesday bit, mm -hmm. you know, and you do, like, 10 sprays or, hell, even, like, five, mm -hmm. that's a little overboard, you know? Like, right. the lighter fragrances are generally not – um offensive yet some people will be offended by like a, like a nautica voyage mm -hmm. you know so well okay now this brings me up to the next question here um some memorable experience of your fragrances at work good or bad now let me start actually with a couple of my bad experiences because i think this somewhat contradicts the premise of wearing something fresh and clean to work is okay. Um, okay. Two of my own, I, the only two com, uh, the only two, uh, complaints I've ever had from fragrances have been at work and were both in, uh, my teaching environment, not my office environment. The first one, when I first started collecting, uh, I used to walk to school. I lived quite close to my school, which is a bit of a luxury over there. But um, mm -hmm. so what I would do, because it is still really hot, I would wear my shirt, trousers and whatever, but I would carry my tie and my bottle of perfume. Okay. So when I got to school, I'd go into the bathroom. I'd tuck myself in, do up my tie, spray on a couple sprays of my fragrance. And I was actually wearing Aqua de Gio, probably no more than three or four sprays of it. Uh, and I walked in, I went out of the bathroom, walked directly into the teacher's room. And one of the teachers that I was kind of friendly with, she came up to me and she's like, oh, Chris, your fragrance, it's too much. It's too bad. You can't spray that much at work. And I was like, how hot was it that day then? I, you know, probably just an average day, but it was just really weird because uh, I had probably at that point in my life 
um, you know, at the start of my fragrance journey, had probably received more compliments from Acro de Gio than anything else I'd ever worn. Yeah, because it's such a, you know, it's it's a, it's an old school fragrance. It's been around for years, and it's so generally pleasing to everybody. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, the teacher actually came up to me, the one of the English teachers, and is she one of the locals or is she just like one of? Yeah, the she was local. Yeah, I was the only uh, foreigner at that school. Yeah. Wow. And that's, you know, it like Indonesians, East Asians in general are like nuts for aquatics. That's like the biggest aquatics market in the world. And maybe it was just something to do with her. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, that's it. That's just the whole thing. It's like, even if most people like it, if someone is willing to complain about it, you can still, you know, get in trouble for it. Like, like well, and you're not going to please everybody. You just said it is yeah. absolutely impossible. So. But it's just funny because I had never received a compliment from any one of the teachers at that school in the entire school year. But that was the one complaint that I got. Oh, uh, okay. Um, my other complaint was probably a couple years later, maybe a year or two years later, different school, but I was actually in class. Uh, I was teaching grade 11 or 12. I still remember the class, but I taught them a couple of years. I don't remember if it was their 11th or 12th year. And uh, I don't know, we were doing something and I was kind of walking around the classroom, watching what they were doing, checking their work, you know, whoever needed help, whatever, whatever. And uh, I walked by this one girl who I was quite aware of. She was, I don't know how to describe it. She was kind of the loser end of the cool kids, if you know what I mean. Oh, uh, okay. So she was popular, but at the bottom rung, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 I know. Okay, so I was walking by her and her girlfriends that all sat in that one little area. And um, I walked by and then all of a sudden, a bunch of them started laughing. A bunch of the girls started laughing. And I turned around, I was like, oh, what's wrong? I didn't know what it was. Like, if it was something to do with their work or if they were gossiping or someone was pulling faces or looking in the classroom window and I was like what is it what is it and the one girl was laughing and then her friend she's like oh she said your perfume smells really bad sir and I was like what really and I, I was like thinking about it what am I wearing I was like man I'm wearing Edition Blanche what yeah and she said it smelled really bad yeah well she got suspended I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just kind of like surprised. I was like, you know, one of the nicest designer houses, one of their more, you know, approachable fragrance, and she thought it was awful. Hmm, interesting. Um, in terms of like positive, I can't think of many. Uh, a grade nine class, which is actually part of junior high school in Indonesia. I know in Canada, North America, it's part of high school, but Indonesia grade nine is your last year of. Uh, junior high school. Okay. And this was in my first year uh, teaching at a different school than those ones. I wore in my Armani diamonds into my grade nine classroom. And there was like virtually a riot. Like the girls in the classroom were like just going insane, like nuts. They were just like, oh my God, what are you wearing, sir? You smell so amazing. I love it. What is it? You What's better be careful there, guy. Nah, man. I <laughs> Nothing. No, no worries on my end. Um, you know, they, they were just like going nuts over it. And the funny thing is at the end of the year, because it was my first year, in like an actual school system, mm -hmm. my students a questionnaire, like all of them and all, all of the grade nine, because that's the ones I was more worried about because they were older, more mature and, you know, had higher levels of English. So I gave my grade nine kids a questionnaire. So I was like, okay, get in a group of like two or three and I want you to just quickly fill in this questionnaire, things that I did well, things that I didn't do so well and, you know, suggestions, you know, for next year. And that same group, you know, like 10 months later, they wrote down for positives. It's like, okay, so what did you say? What do you were thinking that I did well? I'm like, you're you Armani. Felt so good. And I was like, well, okay, thank you. But I meant more like actually my teaching abilities. Like, oh, okay, you were a fine teacher. You smelled really good, though. I was like, you okay, smelled, thank you. Okay, you pretty much out. smelled better than what your actual uh, job performance was then. Well, yeah, yeah. It was just kind of funny because <laughs> they completely forgot it. Well, I had completely forgotten about it, but that was like their number one thing that I did well. Like 
what did you do well? You smelled good. Like, okay, what else? Like, oh, that's about it. You're, you're a decent teacher. Like, okay, thank you. But yeah, those are really the only three that really, really stand out. You know, there's little things here and there. You know, some of my male students in high school would be like, oh, sir, I really like your fragrance. What is it? And I'm like, oh, here it is. I'd write down the name for them or whatever. Like, oh, thank you, sir. Kind of like that. But um, yeah, nothing really, really stands out other than those. Hmm. Interesting. Now, like when it comes to negative aspects... I can't really say anything just because, like, I'm always smelling so damn good, Crystal, you know? <laughs> I guess as well you're used to, like, different people. You know, other than your coworkers, you know, generally the people you see, they just get on and off and on and off and on and off, and you see different people well, every day all the time. Pretty much. It, it's pretty much the same crowd I see. You know, maybe, like, the only complaint is, like, maybe wearing too much, you know? Right. Like, when I thought three sprays was was too much, you know? Two sprays was actually too much. So would they actually get on the bus and then go, oh, wow, driver, you're wearing way too much cologne or something? No, 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 no. Uh, like, this is just, like, coworkers. Oh, that would, coworkers. That would ever compliment me. Uh, every now and then, though, like, very, like, I wouldn't say every now and then. That's, like, hmm. once every five, six months. Oh, right. Okay. I'll, I'll get, like, a random uh, compliment. Not, not a complaint, but a compliment. Like, mm. I, I, if, if there are complaints... I don't hear about them. Okay, right, right, right. But like yeah. maybe every now and then uh, a coworker of mine will say, okay, that one is a little t bit too strong, you know? Like, sure. So, but I probably, I get more compliments than complaints. But again, compliments are still very seldom. Yeah, it's kind of the same with me. Like those are really, other than like going to my wife and giving her fragrances to smell and my wife is, you know, Indonesian, East, Southeast Asian as well. So she yeah. definitely prefers clean, fresh, simple, safe fragrances as well. So the only time I really get, comp uh, sorry, uh, complaints from her is when I specifically say, what do you smell of, or what do you think of this? What does this smell like to you? <laughs> but it will be me kind of fishing for her to say something terrible about it. Okay, well, it, it, and, 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 and then in that aspect, it's not like a complaint or a compliment. Oh, no, comes. totally not. But That's it thoughts. would be something yeah. that I like or I'm interested in. And, I, and I, I just say, what do you think of this? Yeah. Like, Ooh, I don't like it. But um, yeah. yeah, those are really the only those you know few times the only complaints i've ever had even though i don't get a lot of compliments either i would definitely say my compliments still heavily outweigh my um uh, complaints for sure yeah well like like yesterday i was actually wearing thallium sport it's just like i think there's yeah pineapple vanilla some woods and maybe uh some citrus okay and i actually had a guy's uh, like because i i kind of went a little heavy on, on the spray yesterday and i did it like every three hours mm -hmm. so. um but like this just this random guy came out it's like wow whatever you're wearing you smell really good guy wow you know? and um i'd say i think it was last summertime mm -hmm. you know um it, uh, passenger and when you come on, like, if you are listening, people, and, like, you come on my bus, like, if you recognize me, I do have a stone-cold face. You know, unfortunately, it just comes with the line of work. I'm just, but I am a nice person. I am approachable. I just have a, uh, don't, don't mess with me, look. You know? <laughs> but um, everybody, like, you know, like, for some reason, like, it, and I forget what route it was, but, like, it was, it was busier and, Everybody was just standing at the very front, you know, and I would ask them over and over, you know, to push back. And they just yeah. went, and I get this, uh, this older Jamaican lady, mm -hmm. she had some sass to her and I, and I like that. She, she comes on and she goes, why is everybody standing at the front? And I go, one sec. And I spray myself. And I go, it's because my fragrance and I'm wafting it to them. Eh? Right. So and then, then they actually start moving to the back. She goes, Oh, so you're repelling them with it. Well, no. She says <laughs> that I smelled very good though. Cause yeah. I, 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 I said, I go, the reason why that they're all standing at the front is cause I smell good and I'm <laughs> wafting it to them. Just being a smart ass in order for them to get to the back to find right. Cause I don't like being a, a an a-hole, you know? Yeah. 
sure. but but it's it certainly like got the moving and she goes Woo, whatever you whatever that is you smell good i'm like thank you very much there you go there you go snap of the fingers yeah well uh overall you know my final thoughts fragrance at you know the office at the workplace you know i'm all for it especially when you do a job that maybe you're not into or you don't enjoy or you do kind of need a little pick me up it, it can make your day that much better yeah it makes it easier catching whiffs of yourself like oh that just smelled nice well, but yeah i think if you you and, and and personally i'm a very considerate person i think I try to be yeah what's that and i try to be as well yeah um i think if you're working in an environment with other people you do need to think about them. You can't yeah, you just... Have, you know. have to be mindful. It's, it's not just about you. It's about the others that, that interact with you as well. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be conscious of them. And yes. if people are complaining about wearing too much or wearing things that are too weird, you do need to change. Well, can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Like, and I don't know if anybody's ever asked you this or, okay. if, or if you've ever uh, acknowledged it but do you do you bring a decant with you and and reapply later in the day uh yeah often i will when i was at work i would usually just bring my bottle because i could just throw it inside my bag yeah. and take to work with me quite easily yeah no, i understand that but um yeah no uh i do like actually right now on the table next to my computer i have literally three or four dozen decants that i'm going through labeling and you know, kind of figuring out what to keep and what gets chucked away or used up or whatever. But yeah, uh, okay. um, I usually do keep decants with me, I guess, because usually I'm quite a sucker for opening notes. Oh, uh, that's, so, that's generally the best. Yeah, level, it is usually. Level, if you will. Um, and, you know, I think it does go back to my designer days. And, you know, there's still a lot of designer fragrances that I really love the opening, but I think maybe the dry downs aren't as good. You know, Amen is a great example. The dry yeah. down, I don't really like that much, but I think the opening is just solid gold. Well, going back to your, to your designer days, if you could uh, talk to someone back home, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, back in Indonesia, mm -hmm. I would really appreciate if you can ship those canales back, uh, back home. Canales, wow. <laughs> um, man, I don't even know what's going on with them. I'll, I'll have a look into it, but uh, All right. I bought those like six years ago or something and if and if and if someone is willing to ship them back to you and you're willing to sell to me for a reasonable price now yeah you have a seller i i wouldn't even charge markup on that kind of thing <laughs> thank you <laughs> um so anyways uh thanks so much for joining me chad well, thank um, you very much for having me i do appreciate this i think this is actually like well beyond the time limit we are expecting which is yeah i was and i generally get very bored of uh like it, and it doesn't matter the, the topic of conversation after a while i just get tired of talking about the same old same old all right well and i had okay. a good time with this one yeah great me too okay so thanks so much chad from a gentleman's journey be sure to check his channel out if you haven't already um and i'm gonna leave the listeners with a quick poll uh tell me your three best or worst Sense for work. So three fragrances you love to wear to work or three fragrances maybe you've worn to work and people have just, you know, told you don't wear that stuff or something. Uh, or tell us some of your rules for wearing fragrances at work. Um, you know, whether it's just don't at all or maybe some parameters or guidelines you have for uh, what you're going to wear to work. And uh, definitely the uh, we'll take some answers, and the next podcast, we're going to share them with the listeners of that episode. So thanks again to Chad. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.